Leaders of a Bloomington mosque have released surveillance video from the day a bomb was thrown into the Dar al Farouk Islamic Center. Take a look at this video. You see the taillights of a truck speeding by the front entrance of the mosque during the early morning of August 5th. Seconds later, a worshiper runs in. He is yelling for help. Another angle shows him running down a hallway. Another worshiper runs towards him. And then there is the explosion. The reason why we showed this to you is because of the investigation is taking too long and some of the you know social media people are saying this may be not true or something. The FBI set up a special command post for tips, but no one has ever been arrested in this case. The number to call if you have any information is 1-800-CALL-FBI. The agency and Muslim advocacy groups are offering more than $50,000 in rewards. Police are investigating a shooting in North Minneapolis that sent a man to the hospital. It happened around 10.30 last night at 33rd and Aldrich Avenues North. Police say a suspect approached a man and demanded his stuff, then shot the man one time in the leg and ran off. Officers applied a tourniquet until paramedics arrived to take him to North Memorial Medical Center with non-life-threatening injuries. No arrests have been made. First responders from across the state are training for what they hope never happens. A major chemical or oil spill with a tanker train on fire. Special funding from the state legislature created a training center at Camp Ripley. That's where Bill Hudson spent the day yesterday to see firefighters tackle a very dangerous scene. This image was our wake-up call, burning oil tankers in Castleton, North Dakota. All 10 of our 11 chemical assessments seem to have sent one or two people. In the woods of Camp Ripley, they'd simulate a truck tanker car accident, soon to get a whole lot worse. The train car has got uh, chlorine on it, and uh, the truck has 55-gallon drums. Uh, it appears to be... Uh, waste chemicals. Fire departments, large and small, are the railroad's first line of defense. There's no safer way to do it. That said, being prepared for anything is essential, and that's why we're here today. So to stop the threat, they'd first fight the fire. Then a chemical assessment team climbs the tanker to try to close the valve. It's a lot different than fighting a house fire. It's a completely separate animal, and it's, you got to train on it just, as, just like you would for house fires. Completely different deal and a whole different set of hazards. Hazards they're now prepared for, should the unthinkable happen here. Well, you try to train for worst case scenario so that if anything like this does happen, they're prepared. Bill Hudson, WCCO, 4 News. There are 11 designated teams across the state trained in assessing chemical accidents capable of getting to any scene within a couple of hours. Some small business owners are speaking out about the effort to lure Amazon to Minnesota. The company is promising a $5 billion headquarters and up to 50,000 high-paying jobs. Minnesota is among more than 50 states and cities making a bid for the second Amazon headquarters, a bid that could include millions of dollars in tax incentives. Uh, Amazon and other huge companies like it have received literally hundreds of millions of dollars in tax subsidies. Small business owners like us wake up every morning wondering if we're going to have health insurance again in a few months. In Minnesota, small businesses employ more than a million people and create 30,000 jobs every year. The deadline for the proposal is tomorrow. Another Target store is opening today in Minneapolis, but it will be a little different. Target's new uptown small format store is located at 1300 West Lake Street. The store will offer select apparel, home items, and groceries. It will also include a CVS Pharmacy, Starbucks, Target Mobile, and order pickup. The goal behind Target's smaller stores is to tailor the space to meet the needs of the local community. The store officially opens to the public this morning at 7 before the grand opening Sunday morning. This is Target's third small format store in the Twin Cities. You'll soon have another airliner to choose from at MSP International. JetBlue flies to more than 100 cities in the U.S., the Caribbean, and Latin America, and will land in the Twin Cities in May. However, it will only offer three daily nonstop flights between the Twin Cities and Boston. There are now 16 airlines that fly out of Minneapolis-St. Paul International. More airline choices often mean better prices for travelers. Two years from now, high schoolers in St. Paul will start classes an hour later than they do now. The Board of Education voted in favor of administration recommendations last night 
to push back secondary start times an hour from 7.30 to 8.30. Elementary schools would start earlier because of transportation issues. The change wouldn't happen until the 2019-2020 school year to give the district ample time to make the transition. All of the details should be finalized by October of 2018. University of Minnesota re researchers say teenagers who go to school later perform better in class. Attendance also goes up and tardiness goes down. Minneapolis and Edina made this change several years ago.